to be the spiritual head of our homes. Yeah. So there is a leadership role the husband is supposed to have. Right? Yes. Yeah. But I think a, a, a wife who is wise and who is godly understands that as a neck, she still has influence. Like I may be the head of the home, but I can't turn without that neck. And I think a man who leads but does not honor his wife's voice, I think he sets himself up to be hurt. My wife is more intuitive than me in some areas. She may be wiser than me in some areas. She may come around people and say, I don't like that woman around you. I don't like this thing. They would deserve it. Be sharp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, honey, when you said when you said that in the pulpit, you should have said that. You should have so so for me, it looks like early in my marriage, I was aggressive. I was prideful. I was arrogant. I would not listen to my wife or my kids if they try to rebuke me. I just I was I just didn't have the humility to do that. Wow. I've grown now in my forties to a place of humility where my my oldest kids, I got two teenage three teenagers and mm-hmm. one in college. They can come to me and say, Daddy, you know when you said this, that hurt me. And I and I know how to apologize. Or I allow them space to kind of reason a little bit. Like, you know, you you're saying this, but this is what we feel. And I have apologized. I allow space for my wife to gently rebuke me and come talk to me. He's like, honey, this is the way you made me feel. Wow. Um, you shouldn't have said this. Um, when you act this way, this is what it feels like being on the other side of you when you behave this way. And so I think now mm. for me, I think too many men think it, it's not manly to acquiesce to when somebody's confronting you in your home. They think it's not manly to do that. I think it shows more masculinity to show the humility to say I'm wrong because it's not instinctive. It requires exactly. So for me, I'm trying to teach my two sons, real men know how to apologize, right? Real men. I teach my sons, real men own they crap. Mm. Like when you smell like crap, own that. When you make a mistake, own that. When you fall short, own that. Like real men, we own that. Like, like I think we are weak when we deflect. That's good. We are weak when we make excuses. We are weak when we can't acknowledge we are wrong. I think it takes more strength to say you're wrong. So I think biblical masculinity is both leading well, loving well, discipling well, but having the humility to say, I made a mistake. I'm wrong. I can course correct. I could do this differently. So this actually helped me out recently. I I heard this clip, you know, because, again, how it works is, you know, our whole team sends clips throughout the week and uh, then we compile it together and choose the ones that we think will fit. Um, I remember hearing this earlier this week and it actually helped me because my wife was correcting me on something. And and this uh, came back in my mind. I was like, I need to just listen instead of being defensive. I need to listen. Mm -hmm. Um, And it kind of just helped me realize that she's here to give me feedback that I nobody else would be willing to give me or feel the, the license to give me. Yeah. And how do you guys feel about that? Do you see do you see the role of a wife, especially in somebody like him who's a minister, um, is to provide that correction in the house so that you don't look like a fool outside? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. I definitely do. I mean, especially when, you know, um, I, I can remember like raging out against my family. And it wasn't even a big thing. It was really a small thing. But it was like, man, if I could do this in the house, then I need to. I probably need to know and check it before I get outside Mm -hmm. the house and it becomes Mm -hmm. a thing. And it was really small. When I say raging, I mean, it was really small. It was like, I just was like, you know what? I'm upset today. So I'm I'm not in a good mood. Y'all are getting on my nerves, that kind of thing. And I left the house and just went and prayed for about an hour and came back and was like, apologized to everybody. Like, took all of my kids aside and told them why I did what I did. Um, And it was better for me to have done that and realized how embarrassed I was in that moment than to get outside, get into an altercation with another adult, and it go sideways real fast. Man, you hear the difference in that apology and that humility than the one we talked about earlier. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying. Don't you hear a clear-cut difference between that? This is a man who said, you know what? I had to acknowledge my flaws. Yeah. And he also showed you how he went about correcting those issues. Like what you broke down, you acknowledged that you were wrong in that issue. Mm-hmm. You went back home, you apologized to your family. Yep. And since that point forward, there has been a change in the way you handle situations. Mm-hmm. With him, it's a change in the way he, he handled his kids and talked to them and his wife. And he sees the beauty and the value of his spouse. And like he spoke about her with such respect and honor him, praise, like, he doesn't come across a, like a man who, if he cheated on his wife, would be on the show making a joke about it. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? It was a sincere apology. Like, it was authentic and genuine. 
not to put them on a pedestal. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, though, yeah. when you look at the two. So that's that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. This is sound like somebody who's really apologetic and wanting to make a change mm-hmm. in comparison. And what he said was absolutely correct. Well, you need somebody yeah. who's going to be real with you. Like, as a help me, like, she's going to be there. I think when I look at marriage, I, I, from a biblical perspective, I think it's, it's, it's a very spiritual thing when it comes to far as what does a help me look like? And most people who have a, a chauvinistic uh, pers- uh, perspective of that is whatever I want to do, she's going to be come along for the ride on whatever I want to do. And that's not necessarily the case. God has called this woman to something as well. This woman has a purpose. She has mm-hmm. an identity in Christ. She has things that God wants to do. And what's supposed to happen is who God created you to be, who he created her to be, comes together and you're able to serve the kingdom of God with your marriage. And sometimes that involves calling the other person out. And you should feel like this is the safest place for that to happen. If I want anybody calling me out, I want the person who I signed up to do life with to call me out and let me know where I'm weak and where I'm frail mm-hmm. or where I need to improve at before I go out of the house with people who don't love me, who don't care about me, who may take my weaknesses and my flaws and try to capitalize off of those things and make me look bad or try to use them for their benefit. So I think that's, that was a beautiful, that was beautiful what he said. I think it's the difference between the two is one person fears God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like when you fear God, bro, like, you could tell Pastor Phillips, like, I have a reverence for the Lord. Mm-hmm. I can't do foolishness. You know what I'm saying? When you don't have the reverence <laughs> for the Lord, like, yo, I can do whatever I want to do. So I think that's the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like um, like what he said about you being the man being the head and the wife being the neck so you can help move. I really, I, I, I see that. I see that that when your wife is there and she could see those blind spots in your life to help you and be like what he said was real like mm-hmm. if you're around somebody and she goes hey i don't know about homie or i don't know about her you know what i'm saying don't take that lightly you know what mm-hmm. i mean because you may see something because you may see their work so you may see what they could do for you but you don't see their character you don't see the the flaws because sometimes women can pick up flaws in somebody yeah. mm-hmm. way quicker yeah. than a man yeah. and sometimes you you don't want to override that because because you maybe you got a business and my man is like yo yeah. You know, but she looking at him like, yo, that dude's a wolf. Mm-hmm. I, I, something about him I just don't like. Mm-hmm. And you got to be like, okay, God, give me give me discernment about him. And then once that discernment happened, then you you, you be like, oh, she was right. You know what I mean? Because she, she's not just looking out for your best interest. She's looking out your family's interest. Yeah. She's, looking mm-hmm. out, she's looking out for everything you're trying to do in your life together and building what y'all build together. So, like, to dismiss her, like... She don't know what you're talking about. It's like it's very detrimental because just, if you, yeah, it just shows how important it is you, when you choose a wife. Like yeah. this is this yeah. is somebody you're trusting to yeah. give you good feedback and not somebody that's going to yeah. give you selfish yeah. and and detrimental feedback. So that's 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 a really important role that you're choosing for your for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah for yeah, me right. in 22 years, bro, of marriage, wow. my wife has never been a confrontational person mm-hmm. yeah. she's never had a fight in her life right like um and even now considering like she's like a vp of our company right so she deals with all types of craziness and i'm like yeah. you don't she just like doesn't argue a fuss right and so for me it's been easy to hear her yeah. because she is not she's coming from a place you know when the bible talks very about logical. a virtuous woman yeah. right like she she's like very logical but also it's like I'm really hearing what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like she, and it can be, I remember in our third or fourth year of marriage and you know, I had my career, I had my own business and all of that and she's finishing up her degree and I had to step back. And I, at the time I felt less than a man cause I wasn't the one handling the bills. Mm-hmm. But she was trying to get to her career too. So now I'm here with the kids and I'm looking <laughs> like a fool cause I'm like, this ain't, this ain't what we do, right? But she's yeah. like, no, listen. And I'm like, I, I'm not trying to hear you right now, <laughs> right? But looking back at that, it's like both of us were able to progress to get to this yeah. point in our lives. But now we have three yeah. kids who are grown, right? Yeah. And oh, wow. they saw that. They also saw that, but also God knew. And, and what I told her the other day was, I said, it wasn't so much of me looking at you and what you just said, my fear of God. My loyalty is not to my wife. Yeah. My loyalty is to God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? That's truly where everything yeah. begins. And that kind of leads yeah. everything. So when she speaks and when she talks, because I feel I picked the right person, yeah. I'm like, okay, God, 
Yeah. You know, I wouldn't even be rapping yeah. if she didn't. <laughs> yeah. Like, I told her I wasn't going to rap and stuff. I come home. She didn't say, you need to be doing this. I came home. There was a composition notebook. <laughs> wow. Right. Ten. Wow. Damn and right. a note in there. And it said, you know, God has called you to this. God, she was, she was encouraging mm. me. You That's get what awesome. I'm saying? Yeah. So I think when you talk about that neck, Hopefully you don't got a stiff neck. <laughs> <laughs> stiff neck. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's real. Uh, she gotta be. You gotta be able to move. So, yeah. like you said, it's very important who yeah. you pick. I thank God He gave me the wisdom yeah. to pick who yeah. I had. Amen. You get what I'm yeah. saying? So, 